Here's something about charcoal you may not have considered. Today, while I demonstrate this horse and charcoal, I wanna to talk to those of you who do commissions that take portraits or pet portraits about why this medium can add a little bit of a boost to your business. For those of you who are members over at Patreon, the real-time avail, what? No. For patrons, your real-time version is available over there now, so make sure to head over and check that out. So one of the reasons that I have just completely become obsessed with charcoal lately is working on the Cans and Me Tans paper, the toned paper. I, if you've noticed lately, I have not used any white paper for this. I really like working on the toned paper where I'm able to use both a white charcoal and my black charcoal pencils. The cool thing with this, ugh, there's so many cool things with this. I feel like I've turned into just an advertisement for charcoal in general, but the cool thing with charcoal, it is a very, very fast medium. So let's say you take pet portraits and your normal pet portrait in oil, acrylics, color pencil may take you weeks to months to finish. You've obviously got to charge a lot more because of that. But with charcoal, this can be done. I had this done in a single night, if I remember correctly. You can get it done very quickly, which means you can have an offering to your clients of a much lower cost way to get a pet portrait from you. I mean, you, you're not spending as long, so typically you can, the, the materials are very inexpensive, so you can generally afford to charge much, much less for it. So if you are a, a portrait artist, this may be something that if you're not already doing, you should definitely add to options available to your clients. So as I go through here, I am blocking in mainly my darks. I've got a few areas that need to stay light that I put the white charcoal pencil, but for the most part, you can see I'm really just building up my darks. Now, when I work in charcoal, I personally prefer the look of it, the finished piece looking like charcoal, not so much a full black and white photo. I mean, when I work in graphite, you're typically gonna see me do a lot more detail, less sketchy looks. When I work in charcoal, I just love that look. And this is complete personal preference. It's not an issue of one way is right or wrong, but I really like the look of it's blended. I've got my values in there, you know, the definite darks, the definite light, so it's got the three-dimensional look, but I'm okay with leaving some of the sketchiness in there, seeing some of those pencil strokes. I just think it looks gorgeous. So if you've not tried that by leaving the sketch marks, I would definitely recommend seeing if you like it in your own work. Plus, it is a lot less time consuming than blending every little thing. Now, as I work on the eyes with the details, if I was doing something where I could not get my details sharp enough with charcoal, while I've not done it here, I do wanna give you this little tip. You can take a paintbrush with just water and lightly just go over the area that you need a little bit more sharp, a little bit cleaner. That can work really well. Or if you've got the water brush, Derwent has one, Faber-Castell has one, where you just squeeze it a little bit and it pulls water into the, the bristles. You can use that to clean up your edges if you do like a sharper, look. Now for me, the only area that I might do that on would typically be around the eyes where I want it to be more detailed. But as I work my way out, I don't want it too clean out here. I like that sketchy look. How many times can I mention that? Probably more. We'll find out. Now, if this is moving too fast for you and you want to follow along in real time, head over to Patreon, where for as little as $4 a month, you get access to this and all of my previous lessons. There are over 300 available immediately when you sign up to go ahead and follow along with. I will have a link for that in the video description along with my video library if you wanna see what types of lessons are available for you there now. As I work on the mane, this is gonna be very similar to drawing people hair, where the, the hair is built into clumps and clusters. It's not so much about putting a whole bunch of individual strands. There are a few individual strands, but for the most part, these are big clusters of fur stuck, or the mane, the hair, I guess, stuck together. And it's the same thing when you draw people, I really need to do a charcoal, person portrait, but when you draw people and you're drawing this type of hair, that longer straight hair, you don't want to sit there and try to draw in every little strand. It typically is going to come out looking very stringy, kind of dirty, oily hair. We don't want that look. It's not cute. So in this case, you can really see how I've done these clumps and clusters. Now they are more defined here where I've got the definite dark shadows in underneath some of the lighter bits. And so it, it gives you that more 3D look there. But no Notice when you paint or draw hair, how you get those clusters or clumps of fur or hair. I, I'm bad at words. We just, we, we all have accepted that. Let's move on. So I'm really now going back through and focusing on getting those darks much, much darker at the lights, much lighter. At this point, everything's fairly well mapped out, but it's, it's not, 
it doesn't have definite lights and dark. So that's really what I'm focusing on here now is coming back through. There are some details, but the most, the main thing I'm focused on, get my darks darker, get my lights lighter. Build up that contrast. When you're using a reference photo and you're, you're trans, transposing, I don't know, into to charcoal or any medium that is going to be in black and white, make sure you take that reference photo and take it into any photo editor and make that black and white too. It's going to be much easier for you to judge your values. I will typically also take that photo and hype up the contrast a little bit because sometimes things will look really good in color, but when you make them black and white, you realize it's a little bit flat. If you hype up the contrast in the photo, it'll make it easier for you to see where you may want to hype up that detail or not detail, hype up the contrast in your artwork itself. Now we talked about the benefits of doing charcoal portraits for those who are taking commissions, but it's also one of the best, if not the best medium to learn portraits, if, whether it be people or animals, to really get the hang of doing those details. I've always recommended with students, no matter what medium you want to work in, when you start with portraits, do them in black and white first. That way you're separating two challenging elements. Mixing the skin tones or whatever, if it's an animal, mixing those colors can be its own challenge. So if you've gotten to where you've pretty much mastered or, or at least gotten comfortable with getting the values correct by working in black and white, that's one challenge. So you've kind of separated the two hard things, your values, and then you can learn color later after that once you're more comfortable with values. So I do think that students who work in black and white first when learning portraits are going to do so faster. The other thing is that with, with charcoal, it is so fast. So let's say I need to complete 50 portraits before I get to where I, I feel comfortable enough to start selling them. You probably could do it sooner than that, but let's, let's just throw out a random number. I can get 50 drawings done in charcoal in maybe a hundred hours of work. Where I, or maybe longer than that, but we'll just, I'm just throwing out random numbers. I'm not good at math. That's not what we're here for. But if I had to do that same thing in oil painting, we're looking at closer to thousands of hours to get 50 drawings or 50 paintings done. Oils are a much slower medium. And that's going to be true of any other medium besides charcoal. So if you can learn the basics of drawing, the basics of values with a very fast medium, I think that it will help you to progress even faster as an artist and, and really master those skills of portrait drawing, again, whether it be animals or people. Not to mention, they're really inexpensive. It's one of, I don't know if there is a cheaper material out there, but it's one of the least expensive art supplies out there as well. So just tons of benefits, whether you are a professional artist and selling your work or you're a new artist who's just starting to dip your toe in the water, uh, dip toe, toes, I don't know, maybe you have more than one toe, into the water of portrait art. Charcoal really is one of those mediums I think most should get into. And I've used charcoals, the bigger heavy blocks. I don't like those as much. And I also found I was making a big mess with them. And that was one of the reasons I stopped using charcoals years ago is they were very, very messy. I don't like being messy as I work. These pencils, I'm not getting much fallout. I'm not having much issue with the mess. The, these specific pencils with that paper, I'm surprised at how little mess I'm getting. Like on the easel, there's not much fallout at all. Now, when I'm done with my artwork, or better yet, do it a couple of, spray it a couple of times while you're working, I'm going to use a product called Spectrafix. I'll put a link in the video description, and I put it in a fine mist sprayer. The reason that I do that is it, well, it's a fine mist sprayer. The mist is going to come out very fine versus big clumps of, of the spray. I don't like using it straight out of the bottle, but putting it in a fine mist sprayer, I will lightly go over this. Ideally, a couple of times while you're working, and then again, at the very, very end, and I can't stress the light mist of this enough. I would rather see you do maybe five layers, light mist, light, light, like barely anything mist, let it dry, do another layer, let it dry, do another layer. If you go too heavy with that stuff, you will darken everything. So your darks will look a little bit darker, but so will your whites and you can lose a lot of those whites. Now I have used other sprays in the past that were a finishing spray to seal it off and I, it really darkened those whites. The Spectrafix, I'm re, I'm super, super happy with how little darkening I see with using that product. So it's the only one that I use to spray it after. This artwork then, when done, 
technically, if you were to come and run, even with spraying with a Spectra Fix, if you run your hand across it, it will come off or smudge under your hands. So it really should be framed behind glass. Spectra Fix isn't going to seal it down so it will never move again. That is just going to help that to not fall off over time. So you may think, well, why would I spray it at all if I have to still put it behind glass? Because if you put this, let's say you mat it, you put it behind glass over the years, you're going to start noticing in the frame, dust landing on the edge of your mat. It's the charcoal slowly falling off the paper. So even though it is framed behind that glass, I would always, always recommend using a finishing spray. This Again, Spectra Fix is my go-to to help that to not happen as much as possible. That is just the nature of charcoal. Pastels would be the same thing. I always recommend using a spray over those. Not that I personally like pastels, but it is something that happens if you talk to a framer, they're gonna tell you that that's actually where I learned that information. They're gonna tell you the same thing. You need to spray it with something to help it to stay more permanently on that paper, even though it, it will be framed behind glass. I'm super excited about this. Many of you know I'm going to be at Aquashella in Dallas here Halloween weekend. I'm going to be doing some live sketching. I'll get some video of that, but I'm going to be doing live sketching and offering those sketches, quick sketches that I spend maybe 20 minutes on for sale at the show. Now, it's not necessarily that I think I'll sell a ton of those, but I do think it may be a bonus to draw attention to the booth. One of the things I've done in the past for events like this is to bring a big painting I was working on, all this little detail. The problem is there's not a lot of progress very quick in those pieces. I'm going to spend hours and hours and hours on one piece. Here, what if in 20 minutes someone can stand there and watch start to finish this piece get done? I have a feeling this is going to draw a, a little bit more attention to my booth. It's a theory. We'll see. I will get back to you after Aquashella and let you know how that worked out with video. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Also click on the bell notification icon because YouTube is terrible about notifying people when new content goes up. You can also sign up to my email newsletter, list, link, something's in the video description. Just, just look at the video description.